Welcome to Edit for Clarity. I'm Leo Soderman. We've got a whole lot of stuff to talk about this week, so let's get right to the news. On Thursday, the valves on a new ceiling cap were closed, and the oil from BP's Macondo Well in the Gulf of Mexico stopped flowing for the first time since April 20th. The cap's being tested to see if the well can sustain pressure. And if the pressure in the well remains high, then the well below the seabed is in good shape. If the pressure drops, well, that means there's a leak somewhere below the seabed, and it may present problems when the relief well is used to kill the well. The test is expected to last about 48 hours. Now, while oil flow is currently stopped, there are still lines collected to uh, collection ships on the surface, and the lines will be opened up prior to the relief well completion to lessen the pressure on the well as the bore is breached. It's the best news we've heard from the Gulf to date. But even if the flow has stopped, cleanup's going to take years. Former Vice President Dick Cheney released a statement this week saying that he had undergone heart surgery to have a, uh, an impeller pump implanted. And this pump is used to keep flow, blood flow moving when the heart's failing. The unique side effect of this is that Cheney will no longer have a pulse. The pump keeps the blood flowing constantly instead of actually pulsing the heart. You know, this could be a setup for a whole raft of jokes, but you're not going to hear them here. Medical experts have explained that the installation of the pump really is a last resort measure. The heart's damaged to the point that it can no longer function. And short of a transplant, there's no other solution to keep the former vice president alive. There's really no joke that makes that reality any less serious. You remember the crash test dummies uh, commercials back in the 80s and 90s to get you to buckle up? Well, for their valiant work, they've been given a home at the Smithsonian Institution. Now, Vince and Larry are the name of the dummies, and uh, they were part of a public service campaign designed to raise awareness of seatbelt safety since around 1985. The campaign ran through 1998, and those two dummies became familiar icons for safety. I remember watching those commercials myself. Fun guys. And, you know, smarter than half the people around Senate passed Wall Street reform this week on a largely partisan vote. Three Republican senators joined Democrats in passing the Finance for More reform package. Uh, this was intended to put regulations in place to prevent another financial meltdown. It also enacts strong consumer protections designed to curb what's been perceived as excesses in terms of fees and charges that are racked up by consumers or against consumers by banks. Legislation is supposed to go to the president's desk. He's expected to sign it quickly into law. Uh, you know, the administration has been on a bit of a roll lately. Uh, they've been getting more major, major legislation passed during this session of Congress than has been passed in decades. Healthcare reform, financial reform, economic stimulus. It's a pretty full plate for most administrations for four years. These guys have done it in 18 months. But Democrats are facing a potentially hostile electorate this election season. Fairly confused electorate at that. Only 46% of Americans give the president a positive rating in terms of handling the economy. And that's a low number. It's not the whole picture. When asked about whether they thought Democrats could handle the economy, the number drops into the 30s. And when asked about Republicans, the number drops down even further into the 20s. Now what this shows is there's an electorate out there that just doesn't trust Washington. Meanwhile, Republicans, they're already measuring the drapes in congressional offices with public exclamations of impending victory. What are they right? It's hard to tell. Now, there have definitely been some momentum on their side, but recent stubbles by Republicans have been kind of eating into that. You've got Joe Barton's apology to BP. You've got Michael Steele's revisionist version of the war in Afghanistan. You've got a number of gaps that have been stumbling blocks. Adding to these issues for the Republicans are the Tea Party folks. As a rule, they tend to be farther right than the majority of the Republican Party. And a few Tea Party folks actually made it through the primaries. There's a prime example in Nevada with Sharon Angle. Harry Reid was facing almost certain defeat in Nevada before the primaries. But with Angle getting nominated, he's, she's a Tea Party favorite, and now his re-election chances are rising. He's actually ahead. Why? Angle's views are in the spotlight now, and her extreme right views on a number of issues are turning off even the staunchest Republicans. Similar situations playing out with Rand Paul. His gas the night after he was nominated 
talking about his views on the Civil Rights Act, got him sequestered. The party leader just pulled him out of public view, pulled him out of limelight so he doesn't continue to ruin his chances. Unfortunately for both of these candidates, <laughs> video lives on. There they are, recorded in all their glory, and they're putting out their views that average conservatives can't support. And these type of stumbling blocks may just be what stops the Republicans. But it's going to be a battle for the Democrats. What they need to do if they want to keep control of Congress is to tie Republicans not only to the extremes of the Tea Party favorites, but to their recent actions or lack thereof in terms of legislation. For example, Republicans do their best to stop the Wall Street reform measures. They even vowed to repeal them in the fall, despite the overwhelming majority of Americans who were frustrated with the finance industry and their pay packages and bonuses. Now, if the Democrats can tie Republicans to Wall Street, Republicans will have to spend a whole bunch of time just undoing that connection. And Democrats can also pile on by reminding voters how the GOP has been apologizing to BP. Not only Barton, but a lot of Republicans have been trying to come to BP's rescue. Again, if the Democrats continue to tie the Republicans to big oil, as well as Wall Street, then the issue becomes which party's further in the pockets of big business. Now, if you add to this the racist tones that many in the Tea Party have been taking, you got a recipe for conservatives losing at the polls. That's not going to be easy, though. Healthcare reform is gaining popularity. Over 60% don't want it repealed. But the furor over the healthcare debate is still going to be played up again to, to try to sway voters. Immigration reform is going to be used against the Democrats as well. There's a wave of anger over perceived falls of the federal government when it comes to immigration, and they're going to use it as a wedge. In the end, if the Democrats want a chance at winning, they'll have to do something they're not used to. Get tough. Democrats like to appeal to reason, to logic. Unfortunately, they're facing opponents who care less for the facts and more for the win. I'm not saying Democrats should be dishonest by any stretch, but I am saying they can't pull any punches. If they want to win, they're going to need to be throwing haymakers, not jabs. We'll be right back.